<laughs> All right. Now, one way to do it, and, and this is this is a nice way because it, it does show off yet another thing that we can that we can uh, another tool in your tool toolbox here. One way we need to eliminate is we need to, you know, bring it down to black and only have this working in places where light is falling upon the surface. Okay, so in order to do that, let's let's just talk a little bit of math here, real quick. Back to Photoshop. All right, so here's some simple equations, right? And and I know, you know, you probably you're you're in a you're you're an artist, right? So uh, so maybe you don't care so much about equations, but this is really simple stuff, right? One times one equals one, right? We know that. Uh, 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. We know that. Uh, 1 times 0 is 0. In fact, anything times 0 is 0. Okay, so, I, you know, I don't mean to insult you, but, but this is pretty easy. Now, the nice thing is that, well, we just go back to Maya. Okay, and, you know, we have, uh, let's just find a place where we can look at some colors here. You know, color gain or default color. Right, going to click on the color swatch, and let's look at how Maya reports its numbers. Oh. You know, between zero and one, it looks like. Okay, halfway, all the way up is one, all the way down is zero, and the middle is 0. 0.5. Okay, so, um, so that's interesting, right? Because we know that between everything we, that we get, well, maybe not everything we get, but a lot of what we get is going to be between zero and one. Okay, so when we look uh, at how this works for us uh, in images, right, it's pretty simple, right? I can there's one right white uh, here's 0.5 now if i switch this over in photoshop to multiply see i can do equations here right i can knock this down to 0.5 right if you can see my rgb values here it's 128 which is you know 0.5 of 256 so just by multiplying a 0.5 i can bring this down i can Bring in a black. I can set this to multiply, and everything is zero, right? It doesn't matter what this is. If it's it's always going to be black. I'm multiplying, right? It doesn't change. So how does this make us make this useful for us, right? Here is a simple simulation of the uh, facing ratio shader. This is exactly what we get with no light song with a sphere, right? It would just be this illuminated edge, which is kind of boring. But if we had a light in the scene, what we'd want, right? Here's our simple sphere with lit with the scene, right? What we get now is this, okay? We get an add all around. This is how the shaders work, right? Incandescence adds into the shading that's created. But what we really want to do is make this a multiply, right? Because now we can get just that little bit of edge, okay? So we what, what we really ideally, ideally want is this image, we want to multiply our facing ratio shader and then add that into the light, light amount, right? If I duplicate this here, uh, whoop, whoop, right, and turn this to add, right? That's what we want, right? We want just this, well, actually, we want this to be pretty dim here, right? We want to be adding in just this little bit of edge here, right? Add that little bit of edge, additional little bit of detail. Um, but we don't want it to exist down here, right? If I turn this off, there it is again, right? We don't want that, right? What we want is um, something that's more like this. Okay, so how do we do that? So we have to create this math, right? Which is just um, a simple, right? Here we go. Here it's 1, here it's 0, and we just multiply and we can get the result we want. All right, so let's take a look at how we do that in Maya. Okay, so this is the image, right? This is the texture map that we want to be multiplying against uh, the lighting values falling onto the scene, right? So what we really want to do here is look for a node called, wonderfully enough, surface luminance okay now if we look at this node you can see it, it doesn't give us anything right it gives us no information whatsoever um, so this node 
it does, uh, all it does is it tells us how much light is falling on the surface, right? So if your light is a value of one and it's hitting the surface here, right, directly, that would be a value of one. Uh, over here, it would be zero, right? Which seems very familiar to uh, this here, right? Right, zero, one. All right, so what we need to do is multiply that against our facing ratio shader, right? Which is this little setup here. There's our facing ratio, and of course it includes this, but this is the ramp and the mapping that makes it a facing ratio. And here's our surface luminance node providing us with information about the lighting of the surface, right? So then if we, again, bounce around our utility nodes, we will find here in alphabetic order, multiply, divide. All right, so let's create one of those. All right, so I take my surface luminance and I drop it on and I say input one. Oops, let me make it the other way around. I want my input one to be the ramp, right? So I drop it on input one, right? Honky dory connects up, no problem. Now let's take a look at our multiply node before we connect up our surface luminance. Now you can see input one, three values, RGB. Operation is set to multiply, that's what we want, that's by default. But when we drop this on, right, and I say input two, you see that our connection editor comes up. Okay, now the reason for this is because look, here is our value coming out of this node, right? Out value, right? It's a single number between zero and one, or maybe even higher, depending on how many lights you have in the scene. Okay. And when I click it, you can see that I really want to connect it to input two, but no matter how I click, it doesn't happen, right? Well, we can fix that by spinning it down and just one, two, three. We can connect it to all three inputs of input two, X, Y, and Z, right? Which in our case are actually R, G, and B. Does this make sense so far? I hope so. Let's close that. And now, okay, I, I want to reconnect incandescence over here. Easy way to do that is just to drag this right on top and then select the uh, italics incandescence, right? Italics and bold for connected somewhere else. But when I click it, it runs over there. Now you'll notice right away in our little thumbnail that that little bit just vanished right there. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'll store this one, all right? And we'll render again. Okay, nothing over here. That's a big plus. And right now, what's interesting is, you know, you could argue that maybe nothing has changed, right? Because it's difficult to tell. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is I'm going to store this, um, but you know, obviously it's taking it away, okay, where the light is not falling, so that's important. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and reboost this up, you know, to one just for demonstration purposes. All right, we can take a look. Okay, rendering up. This fine bump detail does take a little bit of time to render, but not too bad, not too bad. Okay, so here, we'll take a store that. And so you can see, it definitely between these two images, right, that it, that there is a difference, right? It's brighter, right? So we definitely are adding things back in, okay? So let's reset this back to um, 0.35 where we had it. All right, and we will... And eliminate this. I don't need this anymore. Just for demonstration purposes, there. Eliminate that one. Eliminate that one. Eliminate that one. Okay, so we're back to normal here. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my lights back in. Okay, I've brought those back in, and I'm going to render one more time. Oops. Oh, 
All right. So, um, so that really is it. Like that's how you create your basic um, fabric shader, right? And it really is, you want to make sure that you're um, doing all these steps because, you know, if, if you really want to get moody lighting, then, you know, you get into the dark areas, you'll see all these edges highlighted and it, it'll bother you. It'll bother me. It'll bother everyone. Um, so you, you really don't want to do that, right? But, but you can really see how that little bit of uh, extra illumination around these edges uh, helps soften um, the whole idea of this fabric out, right? So, and, and depending on um, how you want your fabric to look, uh, we can adjust things like, um, like this ramp, okay? So I know it doesn't look like much here, but you can, you can hopefully see that the differences if I were to push this all the way down to the edge, you can see that you'll push um, the, the brightness out or in. You can play with things like exponential up or exponential down. All of these different settings will give you a, a completely different look to how soft or harsh or uh, well kept your fabrics are, okay? So just as a note, I, mean, I do have um, a really basic uh, here at just color and bump, right? So let's store this one. I'm going to put that color and bump back on here uh, and render it out. And you can see the, the final difference between um, just doing a simple color and bump and adding that uh, additional illumination pass, right? And really with that surface luminance node, it's, it's a fairly bulletproof uh, setup. You know, you can see here um, they did something similar. Oh, of course, with this setup here where we have a brighter edge here, but it obviously goes to um, no additional brightness where the light isn't falling. Okay, so here we are. Okay, here's just the color and bump. Oops, it looks like I maybe kept that a little heavy. So let's keep it a fair uh, playing field. I forgot to... Repeat my bump map there. Okay. So render that. Now, the way we set this up, uh, we obviously used our bump map texture uh, just to as a as a quick fix to create this right. And and for fabrics, you know that's a. That's definitely one way to go. You can create your own, uh, certainly, um, and maybe um, really completing that look would, would be maybe choosing something that's a little bit different or modified in a different way than your bump map shader. That's fine. Um, and here we can see uh, before and after adding that, right? Really softening out this look, right? Big difference, I think. You know, here, flat, boring, uh, no good. Uh, here, wonderful, fantastic, okay? so. You know, the thing to remember about this setup um, is that, um, you know, to say it's generic is a little bit, un, you know, underselling it, but this setup uh, is very useful for many reasons, right? You know, we can do things uh, if we wanted to, uh, if I had properly painted a map of just the areas of my, of an object that are facing up, um, and that map had sort of that had a texture in it that maybe sand or dirt or something very finely granular um i could create dust right because dust uh, exhibits the same situation where it illuminates a little bit more on the edges uh than than head on sometimes right so you know there's a lot of different reasons for using a setup like this right uh and cloth is um just one okay so that is our basic uh, cloth shader, and, um, and I hope it finds you well, and I hope you find it to be useful, right? Really dependent on good texturing, um, good scans, good photos of, of textures, uh, and then, of course, attention to detail about how far this little uh, spread out can happen, all right? So thanks for watching, and I hope... Shut up and sit down. Thank you.